Welcome back AP Calc AB students, Mr. Record here. We're going to start to kind of shift our focus a little bit here with Unit 8 and really there's two ideas that really remain uh, between now and the end of the course and that would be area and volume and we're going to about split the difference about uh, halfway through the remaining topics and we're going to start here with area topic 8.4 our example one now the title is area between curves which i know you might be sitting there and thinking well wait a minute haven't we done area and you certainly have the only thing that we haven't really done with that area is talk about what happens if you have more than one curve more than one function that an area might be say lying between these two curves could bound a particular region and you can find the area of that region now the purpose of this video is to only show you an example where we would express our area uh, integration formula in terms of X so let's read this together and it says with a slight modification we can change the concept of finding the area of a region under a curve which typically would lie above the x-axis, not always, but typically for us, to now finding the area of a region between two curves. And I think that this graphic here sets the stage for what we're really about to do. On the left side, you can certainly see a situation where we have uh, an area between this red curve g of x and the blue curve f of x. That's what our goal is going to be. Well, if we break this down, we could think about the area underneath the blue curve f of x. And let's say that we're going to find this area specifically um, between the values, say, 1 and 3. All right. So if we find the area between 1 and 3 of the uh, underneath the blue curve, we have this green shaded region. Right. And that's obviously just the integration of f of x from lower boundary one up to three. But if we focus our attention on finding the area underneath the red curve, which is this light blue shaded region, again, between one and three, depicted by this integral here, integration of g of x from one to three, something interesting happens if you were to subtract those two. Basically, if you scoot away the calculus and just think about the colored regions, you're taking a green region and subtracting a blue region. And everyone knows that when you take green minus blue and subtract them, right, you get pink. And that's what's left over here. And you can see that that would certainly be the case. So when it really comes down to it, to find the area between two curves, you just simply subtract the two curves and integrate the boundaries at which those two curves would normally intersect one. And that's as simple as it gets. Now, the key thing is you have to make sure that you put the correct function first, because as you can see, this is a subtraction. So if we read our blue box together, it says if f and g are continuous on closed interval a, b, and g of x is less than or equal to f of x for all x between a and b. That also means that f of x would be greater than or equal to g of x. Then the area of the region bounded by the graphs of f and g between vertical lines x equal a and b would be depicted by this integral that we just spoke about in our graphic above. All right. I always will say to my students, top minus bottom. You take the curve that's on the top. In this case, that would be noted by the f of x. And you subtract the curve that's on the bottom of the shaded region, and that will always serve you well. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at our one example here. It's gonna ask us to find the area of the region bounded by the graphs of y equal x squared plus two, y equal negative x, x equals zero, and x equal one. Interesting, there's four different graphs there. Find the, the, uh, the area, of course, and then we're gonna sketch the graph and we need to shade the region. And you might find a kind of feel like, well, so many of these examples are going to ask you to sketch and shade, and there's a big reason for that. I think it's really important that you start to get this visual, and as the problems start to get a little bit more complicated, you're going to really rely on this visual. So let's graph y equal x squared plus 2. Uh, hopefully you guys all think of that as a parabola, and if you have to 
run some values in a T chart. There's nothing wrong with that. If you let X be zero, Y would be two. If you let X be one, Y would be three. Um, if you try to let X be two, I think we're going to have a value of six, which is really too big to even sketch. But I think we could throw negative one in there. And of course, we would get positive three as well. Hopefully that makes sense. If you connect those dots, knowing that this is a parabola, you're going to have something that looks like that. And then in another color, I'm going to graph our good friend y equal negative x. Well, we know him to be a diagonal line, right, going through the origin and having a slope of negative 1. So he might look a little something like this. And there's no need to really use a straight edge. Try to make it as straight as you can, of course. Now, notice that we do not have an enclosed region. In other words, if you were a, a rancher and you had some cattle and you wanted to build fences out of these graphs to hold your cattle, we would have a problem, right? These cattle will be roaming everywhere because there's no enclosure. But I think that's about the change when we graph x equals 0 and x equals 1. x equals 0 is just really basically the same thing as the y-axis. It's just a fancy way. And so I could just sketch the whole y-axis, or if I'm smart, I could just sketch the part that's between the two graphs. I might even try to make that straight. And then finally, we can sketch our good friend uh, x equal 1, which is the vertical line right here. And again, I'll just make that go between the two graphs. And before you know it, you have an enclosed region that you can even shade in as per the directions indicate. And this is what you're going to be finding the area of. Notice it's not a very friendly geometric shape. It might look like a trapezoid for at least three of the sides, but this side really messes up that idea. Therefore, we need to use calculus. And so we're going to do just that. We're going to go into our calculus, and we're going to see that the area of this region is just simply going to be an integration with boundaries from the left side of zero. So the lower boundary would be zero. And on the right side, the boundary would be a positive 1. And then as per our formula up here, we would simply take the top curve, the f of x, which in this case is blue, so the x squared plus 2. And we would subtract the g of x, or the bottom function, which is the red function. Notice the color coding that's going on to help you a little bit. And so there you have it. There is your setup for your area. Often it is the case that you might only need to set up the areas. Uh, I will uh, do a few of that, a uh, few of those kinds of problems down the line with you uh, in unit eight, but I also want to kind of use this time to um, brush up on some of our integration skills. There's really nothing that's terribly difficult about integrating this particular problem because it's just a polynomial and we can just integrate it term by term. And so that's what we're going to do. Uh, integrating x squared, I get x cubed over 3. The antiderivative of 2 is 2 times x. And then think about this double negative as being a plus. And the integration of x to the first would be x squared over 2. And then all of this, I can put it in parentheses and the such that and go from 0 to 1. Sometimes students will wonder, do I have to put parentheses around it? You know, you really wouldn't have to as long as you did plug 0 in for all of the x's and 1 in for all of the x's and subtract it in the correct order. Uh, but it's good mathematical notation to kind of group that all together like I did. And again, you might use a little bit different notation for your such that bar. Maybe you put little feet on that. We don't care about that as readers as long as it's got some kind of a, a, of a, a notation that works for you to remind you to finish the problem by plugging in 1 and 0. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to plug in 1. 1 cubed is 1, of course, divide by 3. Plus 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 squared divided by 2 is 1 half. We're now going to subtract, and then we're going to plug in our lower boundary, which is 0. You're going to find out very soon 0 will be your best friend if you haven't already. All of these x's being replaced with 0 is just going to give us 0. No, I would not have to write that um, because I can see it's going to be the case. And honestly, you would be finished. You would not have to go any further with this. If you left it like this as a free response, it would be perfectly acceptable. Uh, if it's a multiple choice question, and this one could be, it's, it's, it's uh, not 
too tremendously complex to take it out of the uh, realm of a multiple choice type of problem, you will have to simplify. And so we can see the common denominator is going to be a six here. So the one third is two over six. The two would be a 12 over six. And the one half would be a three over six. And at that point, we can go ahead and combine our numerators to get, uh, I believe that would be 17 over six. Uh, that's the same as uh, what, two and five sixths, almost three. And I think if you look here, you could probably say that, yep, there are almost three blocks being shaded, two and a half right there, and not quite another half. So that seems to be a, a pretty indicative of just a, a total number of, of square footage, <laughs> square blockage that would be under three. That's really all there is to finding the area between curves. It, it doesn't get a whole lot more complex. There's a few other kind of wrinkles to it. But by and large, this could be a, a part of Unit 8 where you can really work on some things, build your confidence, and go into the AP exam thinking, I am not going to miss any area problems, and you probably won't. Hopefully this helps, and uh, we'll see you uh, uh, at the next video. We're going to take a look at example two, which is just a slightly different pair of graphs that are intersecting. So be sure to check that out. And as always, if you like the videos, uh, be sure to uh, subscribe. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.